Hey everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Now, whether you're new to my channel or a return visitor, uh, I hope you enjoy the video. It's gonna be about a mesh network today um, because a lot of you guys have been asking for that, right? Here we go. Okay, everybody. Well, we have a tree. Woohoo. Okay. Well, this is not about the tree. This is about something very different. Let me just go in here and uh, hit H to hide it for a second. And I'll open up an image so you can see what we're going for, right? So let's go in here and I'm going to go to image plane, import image. And this is the guy that we want, right? So let's say you want to create something like this, a bench with all these boards and uh, this section here and all that, right? Now, how would you go about doing something like that? Well, there's an extremely easy way to do it, and that is by using a MASH, a MASH distribution network. Now, I received uh, several questions to do more uh, MASH videos, so this is one of them, and uh, let me know if you've got any questions, right? You can see that the stands below here are pretty basic, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with all these boards and then you can add the stands later if you like. But what I want to show you guys is the process of creating the boards in this fashion, right? So let's go in here and let's get rid of this. We're going to jump to our four view and I'm going to go up to display and show all because I pulled in a nice tree, right? Okay. Now let's get rid of this. Actually, I can leave that. So what this is, is an initial board. Actually, let's get rid of it. We'll just start from scratch. Okay, so we got our tree. Now what I want is to create a path for my bench, right? So I'm going to jump to my top view. And let me just select these leaves here for a second and hide them. So I got a slightly better view of what's going on. I'm going to go up to create. We're going to go to curve tool and CV curve tool. And I'm gonna start somewhere around here. So I'm just gonna to start to click away and kind of make a path that's gonna swirl around the tree like this. Then come back towards the tree like this and wrap around maybe like that. Now we still have every opportunity to tweak this, right? No worries. So we got that selected. Let's go in here and let's have a look. And yeah, it's not bad. I think we can uh, tweak it a little. We might need to do that, especially here. I don't think it's perfectly round, but there's an easy way to do that. You just right click, go to control vertex. It, oops, I wasn't done with creating it yet. Hit Q on the keyboard, yeah. Right click, go to control vertex, select one of these. And then if you hit W, you can basically just adjust that shape any way you like. Uh, when you do so, be careful that you don't push it up or down like that, right? So I'll just uh, be careful and do it like this. All right, so let's say we're happy with this for now. And keep in mind, you can change this at any point in time if you like, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a, a board that's gonna be our base board, if you will. So we're gonna go up to modeling menu. We're gonna go to poly modeling. We'll take a polygon cube. I'll hit R to scale it down and then pull it out like this. F to frame, five for shaded mode. And let's kind of flatten that out and bring that in a little bit and kind of eyeball whether we think this would be an appropriate size. And I think it's not bad at all. I think it's pretty good. Now, the thing is, we need to have this at the base of our grid because we're going to be doing instancing and we're not going to be seeing this guy later on, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to hold on W to move it. We're going to hold on X and we're going to snap it to the center of our grid. And then we're gonna go up to edit, delete by type history and modify and freeze the transformation. So everything's set to zero. So if I now hit control A on this guy, you'll see that all my translate values are zero, right? Okay, so now we have this. What we do next is we're gonna set up a mesh network. So with our board selected, we're gonna go up to make sure we're in the modeling menu. We're gonna go up to the mesh tab right here click on the first symbol that will create a mesh distribution network like this. Now, when we do that, 
you will see that we get a whole line of boards going straight out in that direction and there's 10. That's kind of the default that a mesh does. Now we need to tweak that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in the attribute editor, hit control A to open that up. And we're going to go to the mesh tab here. And here we have the option to add a curve. So we're going to click on that and we're going to click on add curve node. Now, once we do that, we get this window, right? And what we need to do is we need to add the curve that we've created into our network. Now, let me see where it is right here. It says input curves. Yeah. And what we're going to do and be careful with this. Don't left click on it. We're going to middle mouse click on the curve. So middle mouse and we're going to drag it and we're going to drop it right in here. All right. Now, as we do that, you see that our boards start to move. They kind of move towards the beginning and they're no longer in the middle and they look a bit funky and so forth. Now, what we want is for the boards to follow the curve, right? So in order for us to achieve that, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our mesh distribute node. And right now it's at the linear as in line. We're going to go in here and we're going to change that to initial state. Right. Awesome. So with that, we now have boards kind of following that curve, which is neat, but we don't have enough boards. Uh, we need a lot more and we need to kind of redistribute them, right? Now, by default, as you can see here in distribute, it's set to 10. So let's bump that way up. I don't know exactly how many we need, but I don't know, let's say maybe uh, 200 or so. All right, so we got to 200, but they're all set uh, crunched together. So we need to change the step of this. So we're going to go into, I think it's here. Uh, yeah, step, All right? It's set to 0 0.1. So let's increase that. And as we do that, you see that it's starting to move those boards over that curve all the way to the end. And even though everything is now stretched out all the way to the end, you can see we have uh, too many boards. So we're going to go back in and we're going to reduce this number. So let's try, I don't know, maybe 170. And you can see that the boards are still touching. So it's still uh, a bit high. Let's do 150, 120 maybe. Yeah, 120 is perfect. You don't want the boards cutting into each other. You want to have a distance where when they go around the corner, they kind of touch at the ends there, but they don't cut into each other that much or not at all, preferably. And yeah, this would definitely work. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to select this and we're going to go up to edit delete by type and history. Now, as you do so, that will allow you to delete that curve without anything happening to this. There we go. So we now have the tree here and I'll just go up to display and show all. Yeah. So we got that and I'll hit six to turn on texture and then take this i'll take that initial board and hit h to hide that right i'll take this and i'll raise that up and let's have a look from let's say this view uh let me raise that up to about maybe here okay just as an indicator now what you can do now is you can just basically uh set in end stops or you know crosses or sections that make this into an actual uh, bench right so um we're not going to do all of these but just to give you an idea we'll take a polygon cube and we'll uh kind of push that in like that we'll hit w we'll move it over here jump to our top view f to frame four for wireframe mode yep so let's move that over here after frame again we're going to e to rotate like this, rotate back a little bit, kind of mimic that initial flow. We'll hit R, we'll kind of scale that down to something like this. And then we'll go in here and we'll uh, adjust the height. So the W to bring that up to about there, right click on the vertex. And there you go. So you would have something like that. And then you can obviously move it towards where it needs to be and so forth. Now I'm gonna do a couple of these just to give you an idea in the final render what it could look like, right? I'll play with this. But that's basically how you create a board setup like that. Now, as always, uh, this is much more than just a park bench, right? 
This technique can uh, help you to do so many things like uh, tracks on a tank. Uh, I don't know. Um, let's say, for example, uh, roof tiles, that kind of stuff, right? So be creative with that. Please let me know in the comments what you think and what you came up with and uh, share a link. I can't wait to see what you did with it, right? So uh, hit that little bell thing if you didn't do, uh, do that already. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed the videos. And uh, that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.